Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another The Cube Conversation. This week, we're in our Palo Alto studios with Sarab Senhir. Sarab is the Vice President of Product Management at Nuage Networks, which is an Nokia country, yes, company. Correct. Sarab, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Peter. Happy to be here. Very so, excited. So tell us a little bit about, let's start off, tell us a little bit about Nuage Network. It's a, it's a new company out of a big company. What's the focus? How does Nokia helping? So Nuage, well, well, it's new, but it's not quite new. We have been in the market for four years. And the way Nuage started was, it was part of Alcatel Lucent earlier, and now a part of Nokia. We are really the SDN BU, or the SDN arm of Nokia. And what we have focused on from the beginning is building a platform for secure, automated connectivity for data centers as well as WAN. And we have built that platform and successfully introduced it in many enterprises and service providers. So the unique aspect of Nuage is, while in terms of innovation, while in terms of go to market, we focus, we work as a startup. While we have the service and support that's offered by Nokia as a mothership, so have the unique, best in both worlds, a combination of a startup as well as a large company. Yeah, Nokia is still regarded as one of the finest brands in enterprise networking in the world. So. Uh, you said SD-WAN, Software Defined Wide Area Networking. It's Correct. a term that a lot of people have heard something about, but what are some of the high level benefits, number one, and then number two, why right now? Right, if you look at how enterprise connectivity services were offered down the ages, it was you had to get some kind of a VPN access, whether it was an MPLS or a VPLS access, you got a dedicated lease line, you got a specific device and that's how you would connect your enterprise branches to the network and to each other. And SD-WAN, what it does is it changes that paradigm. It provided, provides a secure automated connectivity in line with cloud principles for, for enterprises across the board. And in terms of why now, I think it is the combination of factors that arise from how the modern enterprise is evolving and how there is a need to deliver not just connectivity, but IT services over IP, whether it is access to the public cloud, whether it is access to SaaS applications like Office 365 or Skype, or whether it is the fact that you want not just pure connectivity, but you want application-aware connectivity. All those trends coming together have created the, the demand and the need for SD-WAN. So you mentioned the cloud principles, and that has been a dominant feature of the industry. We call it cloud experience, mm -hmm. and the cloud experience is typically associated with abstracting and virtualizing hardware. So in many respects, what we're talking about is bringing that same class of technology to the wide area network, the circuits, the access points, everything else, by having a software-defined experience that allows the business to rapidly reconfigure based on what it needs against the, ac against the access to the underlying WAN network that it has. Have I got that right? Absolutely correct. So what SD-WAN basically does is if you look at a traditional branch router, right, it has access to a particular type of network, MPLS or VPLS, it has a data plane, it has a control plane, it's a management plane by which you configure it. What SD-WAN does is takes those control and management planes, puts it in the cloud, takes the data plane, and sort of makes it agnostic to the access technology. So you run the data service irrespective of whether you are on internet, whether you are on LTE, whether you are on MPLS. And using those principles of centralized control, centralized management, standardized x86 based devices offering CPE services, and voila, you get SD-WAN, so exactly correct. So I can see what the advantages to an enterprise are. I can yep. reconfigure my business faster, yep. especially a business that's more digital in nature. Uh, but is this going to be something that the service providers are going to embrace? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, the enterprise, the, and the reason for services providers to embrace this is for their existing customers, it offers an upsell opportunity. For the people who are already on their VPN services, this is an opportunity to broaden the scope from just pure connectivity. This is an opportunity for them to access customers who were, where the cost to serve was too high where they just could not go because they were outside of their geographic reach or also outside of their existing business modeling or business plan. Or, or for example, you might be a, a mid-sized business that uh, required a more expensive circuit or maybe not quite a more expensive circuit. The cost of setting the circuit up, servicing that customer, et cetera, might have been too great. Absolutely. And that's what SD-WAN sort of 
provides a level playing field in of some ways what it does is it delinks the service which is which is the vpn service from the transport and the transport can be internet uh -huh. can be mpls and and there you have the benefits for the service provider for the end and and enterprise in terms of agility in terms of time to service in terms of overall cost right, but that's that's inside the the nature of telecommunications oriented services is is SD WAN going to make it easier for service providers to actually perhaps start moving into more value added data oriented services above just the traditional communication services? That is the holy grail, right? That that is really where the service providers are going and that's where enterprises want them to go. And the reason for that is today when you look at what an enterprise branch or an enterprise office needs to operate, there is connectivity, but then also there is security services, be it firewall, intrusion detection system, intrusion protection system, URL filtering, antivirus. Take it with, on top of that, there is transport optimization, van optimization services, there is emergence of IoT, there are Wi-Fi controllers. Now, all of these services to the enterprise are being offered as a standalone appliance, as virtual or physical and there is no centralized control. They are extremely rigid, and all of these provide a lock-in. What SD-WAN does is, from a telco or a service provider perspective is, it also offers a platform to provide all of these services on top of SD-WAN. So the benefit, is a, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship in the sense that the benefits are both towards the enterprise because they get these services and there is service agility, there is resource optimized resource utilization and cost, and from a telco perspective, ability to sell beyond connectivity. That's one. So if I'm your serv if I'm your if I'm your counterpart at a service provider, I can now think in terms of bringing up new service that w with cheaper yep. connection, lower cost, lower risk, bringing the customer on board, onboarding, uh, at least if not better security. Uh, et cetera, because I'm now using a software-defined approach to making all those connections and, 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 and also managing the service itself. That is correct. What it allows me to do is, in that role, is to provide on-demand program, programmable services. So for example, a firewall. As an enterprise, I can go to a service provider portal and select which of my sites need, which of my branch sites need a, firewall at what point in time, what kind of resources I want to assign to that firewall, and voila, on demand, I have it in place. And from a service provider's perspective, it's additional revenue, it's additional service. Well, again, it's, a, it's a software defined firewall, and, 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 and it's much more automated and much, more, mm -hmm. much better organized because it brings all the possibilities of software defined uh, automation, which might include some machine learning, pattern recognition, et cetera, to bear on the wide area network world. That's correct, that's correct. All right, so, we, we've talked a little bit about security itself. Uh, what are, can you can just give us one or two clear differences in how the old world handled security and the software defined world is going to handle security in the WAN regime. Right, so the thing with security is the security paradigm has changed massively. In the old world, which wasn't that old, or not that and long ago. still here in many respects. Still, still here, absolutely still here. The security was all about east-west, or sorry, north-south protection, which is which means that you are protecting towards threats and traffic coming inside and going outside of data center or your branch office. But what has happened is most of the threats today, most of the attacks today are focused on east-west traffic, which is traffic within branches, from one branch to the other, within the data center itself, that's one. The second aspect is there is a multi-cloud aspect to the enterprise IT. You don't access an applications only on the branch itself. You have applications that run in a data center that's owned by you, private DC. You run applications that are in a public cloud, AWS Azure. You have access to applications that are soft, offered as software as a service, be it Office 365, Skype, Salesforce, and so on. And that has fundamentally changed the, the, the threat surface or the threat perimeter that you have to deal with. And you have to now essentially deal with threats that are coming within this whole expanded branch or enterprise territory or perimeter. So it's, you're effectively, by virtualizing all of these different elements, you're reducing the threat surface. Yeah, what we are doing with SD-WAN is a few things. First and foremost is the fact that, as you we were talking about these value-added services, you can bring these up on demand. You can put a firewall at a particular branch location for, say, 
guest Wi-Fi traffic. You well, can be a specific. On though. this point, you, you can bring a new service up and not have it immediately associated with a whole bunch of capital expense. Exactly, exactly. On-demand, programmable, right? That's one. The second thing is the aspect of pan network visibility. You also have the ability to see what exactly is going on in your network, the network that's spread across the branch office, a private data center, a, uh, a public cloud site, and you have full visibility and insight into who's talking to whom and at what time. At scale. At scale. Very, very big and very small. very small. And we know that there's a whole bunch of you know, mid-sized companies that can't afford a NOC type of capability, but now through yep. SD-WAN, they get some of the same benefits that the big guys get. Absolutely, and the third aspect here is using this information, you have closed loop automation or machine learning where as opposed to saying all of my traffic has to go through this possible intrusion detection function because once in six months I might have an attack versus I see an abnormal traffic pattern and the system automatically optimizes that particular traffic flow to go through this particular function and that allows it to be much more scalable, that allows it for much more on demand in terms of how we perceive security, not just as a lock that needs to remain on a door at all points, for time, points in time, but a function that can be instantiated at, at when you need it. But I also got to believe, in, and, and test me, I'm, I'm going to test you, you t tell me if I'm right on this, that the historical conversation between a service provider and an enterprise centered on the characteristics of the circuits that were being provided. And those circuits were often very much grounded in hardware, associated with the specific links, et cetera. And if you ended up with a security problem, you're now having a whole bunch of haggling and, and it's a very complex set of interactions. The minute you bring SD-WAN in on that, now you're talking about being able to use software and a software response, not necessarily a hardware response, to being actually able to uh, identify, mediate, uh, contain, et cetera, security threats on, on the WAN. Have I got that right? Correct, correct. Earlier, the conversation was really in terms of providing a circuit, providing connectivity, and what you were doing was you were providing this connectivity over some kind of a private IP, right? That's, that was, that's where you were as a service provider. That's what the service you were offering. Now you expand that same paradigm with security, with access to cloud, to really offer IT services on top of the IP layer. And that's the fundamental difference. That's the change. Yeah, so that break apart between the service and the transport. Absolutely. So I kind of uh, said the old way, and you corrected me yeah. and said, wait a minute, it's, this is really the way we're, we're trying to, SD-WAN is trying to make changes, trying to affect a new way of thinking. But there's another technology on the horizon here that actually could really accelerate this process, and that's 5G. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to go too far out here, but, yep. but tell us what some of the near term, uh, how, co how 5G and SD-WAN are likely to co-evolve, if you will. Right, right. They're two sides of the same coin, if you ask me, and the reason is while 5G, as with you know, all the mobile technologies in the past, as we went from 2G to 3G to 4G, is about speeds and feeds. And absolutely, we'll have more bandwidth, low latency, sure. But what 5G is also about is access for to applications from for, in, that reside in the cloud or reside whether uh, uh, closer to the users. And in that sense, what 5G uh, stands out to do or sets to do is create network slices and provide access for applications such as self-driving cars, such as remote surgery. All of these applications not just need speeds and feeds, but require dedicated access all the way from the user onto an application that runs in a data center. And if you look at that paradigm, what how SD-WAN plays in this is by providing a programmable network, on-demand services, by providing on-demand resource allocation, if you take SD-WAN, if you take 5G, then SD-WAN becomes a component of 5G. Because if you are a user, say, conducting remote surgery and you need access to an application that's in the data center, SD-WAN allows you to provide that overlay network on top of existing services and with a certain quality of service with a guaranteed access that is critical to 5G. But as you said, it's, it's, the, it's the fact that 5G is going to promise such greater device density right. uh, within a network. Yes. Uh, and, and in many respects, uh, you're going to need 
SD-WAN to honestly take advantage of the benefits that 5G is going to provide. You, you, you may not need 5G yeah. to take advantage yeah. of the SDN, SD-WAN benefits, right. but you're going to need SD-WAN if you're going to take advantage of 5G. Right. So that kind of suggests that the companies that start, the service providers and the enterprises that start early on this SD-WAN thing are likely to be in the best position to reap the full benefits of 5G when it shows up. Have I got that right? I absolutely believe so, because at the end of the day, 5G is all about application-aware networking, right? A remote surgery application versus me trying to access Facebook cannot be treated the same way, and that's where SD-WAN comes in. And especially if you combine SD-WAN with some other technologies that are coming out of a company such as Nokia, then you have an end-to-end -end traffic engineered path that is being created all the way from the user onto the backend data center that enables all these applications. Yeah, coming back to the point about security, there is one group that hopes you treat your Facebook and your surgery data the same way, and that's the bad guys. Absolutely, and that's what we need to protect against. Yeah, this is, this is a fascinating subject, and it's going to be a lot of uh, discussion and change over the course of the next few years as, as multiple of these technologies co evolve but it's pretty clear that SD-WAN has potential to uh, further accelerate many of the changes that we're seeing in enterprises today as they try to become more digital in nature. Sure, SD-WAN is the future and it's here and now. Excellent, uh, once again, uh, Saad here, uh, 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> once again, uh, so you can cut this, I blew it. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, once again, Sarab Sadir, uh, VP Product Management of Nuage Networks, a Nokia company. Thanks for joining us here in this CUBE conversation. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for your time.